These are the five must-dos with driver. Not all technical, they're gonna really give you a great insight to why potentially your driver is either your hero or your foe. I'm gonna really change the way you strike your driver today. So number one on our list is making sure that we've got the correct loft. Now, you might be saying, Alex, well, how do I know if I've got the correct loft? Well, I'd always, first and foremost, if you can go for a club fitting, I would really recommend go and getting fitted for a golf club. And it really does make a difference in terms of performance and getting something that helps you perform your best. Rather than it being just something generic, it really helps you perform your best. But telltale sign, if we've not got enough loft in our driver, one would be a very flat flat flight, so a ball that was traveling quite flat and out there. Number two would be potentially a ball that was more fady. And number three would be the ball and carrying not long enough. For you to actually hit the ball straighter, hit it longer and more consistent and get a better strike, just by lofting it up one or two degrees could really make a great difference. I did this with Yvonne, I teach her, I've taught her for about a year and a half. It really changed the way she shook her driver by lofting it up one and a half degrees. And I think no matter if you're male, or female, young or old or new to the game, having a little bit more loft than you think could potentially be a great way of hitting the driver a little bit better and consistently. So number one on our list is actually allowing ourselves to have the correct loft. If it's going too low, if the carry is too flat and short, and if this ball is fading more and off to the right, I think lofting it up could be a great way and a great place for you to start. Driver setup as number two. And I like to think of this as something you can do in a transition to the golf ball, <laughs> rather than getting over it and being like, dit, 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 feeling a bit robotic. So this is how exactly I want you to address this golf ball. Just trot behind it. Get your ball to target line, take your hold of the golf club, right shoulder down, right shoulder back for a right-handed player. Keep your shoulders in that position, keep picturing that ball to target line, club goes down, build your stance around it, and I go feet together, left toe out, right foot away. Now I know I'm set up to this golf ball properly, but I haven't got to mess around over the golf ball. I've not got to think about, oh, this right, that right, this right, that right. I'm straight in to where I need to be. So from the top, down, back and in. Shoulders are now square, the ball up in my stance. Left foot out, boom, ball position's good. And now I can pull the trigger. I don't have to stand over that golf ball for an extended period of time. We all know, it. the more we stand over it, the more tension we get, the worse our drives become. Let's get on to number three and make sure you stick around for all of these because one of these will just be the answer to your prayers for driving. And by the way, you apply all these into your golf game. Poor, poor game changer. How many times do you want to say that, Alex, on the channel? But it is. I just want to say if you are enjoying this content at any point, I would really appreciate it if you could share this video with a golfer that you think could really help them improve their golf this winter. I say winter, you could be watching it from somewhere that's in the sun. Well, it's horrible here. Okay, and of also guys, if you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you could, I would really appreciate hitting your big red subscribe button and joining this team. Let's, let's, let's have a bit of a kind of a poll down below. Who do you think produces the best driver on the market. Let's go value for money, performance, looks, absolutely everything. Let's have a little bit of a poll down below. Let's see which brand and driver comes out on top. I'm not saying anything here, guys, but it's gotta be one winner, hasn't it? It's gotta be. No, I'm joking. So comment down below what you think is the best brand, best driver, and take all those factors into account. So the next one, must do with driver. Takeaway, it's gotta be wide and it's gotta be smooth. So I want you to really feel that you stood over the golf ball, feeling as though we get the hands traveling wide and the right shoulder traveling behind us. So it's not wide and swaying, it's wide and feeling as though the right shoulder and the right hip work around us. This is gonna keep the width of our swing with nice turn. And that's really key to getting good consistency. So number three in our list is really feeling that we go wide with that right shoulder going behind us rather than narrow or choppy or picking this club up. It's a great place for you to start your swing as you mean to go on. Many people go wrong with setup, go wrong with takeaway, and you're not pill battle from there. 
Okay, number four on our list, and I really, really focus on this one. This is something that I use out on the golf course all the time. How we move in transition. This, the transition is that difference between top of the backswing and our downswing. How can we make it silky? We see all the best players in the world, no matter if you're Bryson belting it, no matter if you're Matt Wolf who swings it his own way, or Jim Furyk, or Ernie Els who's really smooth, all these guys don't look like they're snatching at the golf ball. Many club golfers, no matter age, ability, we look like we're snatching at the golf ball. I want you to really focus on being relaxed in the golf swing, that'll help us be smooth, but have that analogy of making it oily in transition oily in transition and, it, and you know I like feelings and feelings I think work for a lot of golfers because it's not technical stand over that golf ball make it feel oily not wooden and snatchy is a great place to feeling and a great place to start your downswing from keep the width make it feel oily keep it turning it's a great tip for number four that wasn't the greatest shot in the world guys though get down I promise you, that really will help you improve your downswing. A little bit toey. If you've been watching my channel, I have started going to the gym again, and I can feel it in my arms, which is why I probably look like I'm not swinging at my best right now. Number five is trusting what you've got. Now, when I play, I'll get a feeling straight away which ball flight feels a little bit more comfortable. Sometimes I feel drawers, most of the time it's fade, and other times I have no idea where it's going to go, which I think a lot of good golfers and a lot of golfers can relate to. But we all have a stock ball flight. We all have something that we know we can anticipate this ball going left to right, right to left, or knowing what a ball's going to do. I want you to stick with your shot shape and your shot shape for that day. My advice to you is go and hit 10 balls in a driving range if you've got one nearby or after the first kind of one or two holes make an assumption of what feels best for you don't fight it so if you get to a dog leg and it's the opposite to what your ball shape is doing don't fight it maybe train it back just trust it and stick with it take that sacrifice and distance and go smooth keep it oily use that setup and i think it's going to really help you improve the way you drive the golf ball thank you so much for joining me on my top five must do's with the big dog if you enjoy the content please hit the subscribe button join this team i look forward to joining you daily to help you improve your golf